Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 3, Episode 9, Thoughts. This episode is called Closure. Another episode I love. Spoilers for everything MCU leading up to including this episode. No spoilers in this video for anything that came later in the MCU. So, yeah, we open on another date night between Phil and Rosalind. And yeah, just a lot of a lot of great moments. This thing of you know, oh, the matchbook is that you know, is that memorabilia? Is that because you remember the first time we were together? You know, and you've got the <laughs> she calls him a luddite because he doesn't know what swiping left means, which I think is fair enough for her to call him because. I don't use online dating. I still know, you know, swiping left, you know, that's like declining that person, you know. So so yeah, but and and right, and and the Lola, the flying car comes up flying but not talking, which I think is a, a missed opportunity there. I don't Remember if I mentioned this before in, in one of these Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. videos, but I do really appreciate it because in the first Captain America movie that is mentioned, you know, Howard Stark says that he, you know, what, it, what it, he says something like, we're a few, we're only a few years away from flying cars, and that was in like 43 or something, so yeah, by the 60s he'd worked it out. And I yeah I also the scene reminds me of the fact I I don't think I really underlined I quite enjoyed Rosalind's line about you know oh I I don't cook but I am amazing at ordering takeout you know but yeah you know it looks like oh the you know things are better between them now and then she gets shot in the throat and. <clears throat> really great, like, you know, if you know a lot about, like, how how this sort of effect is done, it's actually not super difficult. I don't, I don't think we, at, at least at first, we don't see a bullet hole. We see her with her hand on her neck, and we see some blood running down her fingers, and what that is, is either it's in her hand or they, they put it on her neck, most, most likely in her hand. There's a little thing that's like squeezing out fake blood. But it's very effective because we're watching and we're like, oh no, the life is literally draining from her, you know. It's much more effective than if we don't see blood. Or at least not so much of it. And just, yeah, very, very, I, I really... I, I think they made the exact right choice. And we see it was Grant who sniped her, you know, whilst doing a little, you know, doing a little drugs. He's got the, the mustache. Seriously, I cannot be the only person who thought of the beginning of Face Off there. And let's see the. Yeah, some, some great fights afterwards, uh, you know the the various hydra people that Phil has to take out one you know he you know he's grabbing guns shooting people and at one point he sets up there's like a, a spray can that he puts on top of candles and the candles are lit or at least some of the candles were already lit because it's date night and you know yeah spray can you know yeah, those are those are common enough, and yeah, it makes this little, you know, explosion that that temporarily, you know, really distracts some of them, some some of the Hydra people, and he's able to take them out. And yeah, he goes back to to base, and you know, ev everyone knows, you know, like Daisy's about to approach, but May knows to to stop her. Everybody else knows, you know, this is not don't. Don't talk to him, just let him, you know, this is what he needs. And, you know, he finds the mat matchbook and there's some blood on it, just, yeah. And, yeah, you know, he we, we hear that he readied the, um, what's it called? 
he he readied the the interrogation room, which I gotta say, the moment that I heard that, I was like, for who? Did you also bring a Ouija board? You didn't leave any of them alive, you know, but yeah, it was to get information from the other agents. But yeah, um, great. I, I thought they did a great job on the on the editing. You know, there's one point where, let's see, I think, yeah, Gemma says it wasn't me that he was interested in, and then the camera pans over, and it's Daisy, even though, you know, it's not that Gemma and Daisy were talking, but just, and, and the, let's see, did the camera pan back, and then it's, then it's Phil sitting there, which is easy enough, you know, just plan it out, time it right, you know, the, the camera pans away from Elizabeth Henstridge, she gets up, walks away, you know, Clark Greggs goes in, sits down, and then they just act like he was there the whole time, just, yeah, very, very nicely done. And, you know, just the, the problem for Grant is he cares too much, you know? No, seriously, though, I do appreciate that. And, and it, it, it holds up, you know, if you think back to all the, all the awful things he's done. Yeah, a lot, like, a huge chunk of these decisions were made because he felt something too intensely. You know, so just, yeah, very, very very nicely done and and yeah it of course I really appreciate like we've known for a while that Thomas Ward is still out there and to, for them to actually like kidnap him and use him very clever and and we see how bad Grant was because Thomas though he didn't become an abuser you know the the fact that he you know and he he thinks it was wrong for for grant to to kill their parents and all this he is still you know so so you know you might think oh you know he's just a complete pacifist but no he is still willing to you know, he might not like pull the trigger or something but he is willing to get them to grant and he specifically says you have to kill him you know so yeah, that's that's what Grant does to essentially an innocent person, and you know so certainly he was innocent when the the well incident, and then we have the yeah you know um, Coulson like orders Mac to to. You know, to to take over, you know, to be acting Shield director while Coulson is on mission, and you know, Mac is like, "Why don't you put May in charge?" I quite like Fitz's description of you know, oh, it's an old wives' tale, something Hydra moms said to their goblin sons, and yeah. I, I gotta say the the um, did not expect to see banks shooting the other ATCU people and yeah the the fact that that was how Gaiera decided to attack very clever because if Gaiera like I wouldn't rule out he might be able to stop bullets in midair but if three people are shooting at him that might be a little much. And it's also just more tactical. So instead, he takes over one of them, and you know, I, I mean, he's essentially he's controlling the the muscles in the the in his arms and hands, you know, with the with the telekinesis. Yeah, you know, the other guys don't expect to be shot in the back by banks, you know. So yeah, very very nicely done. And and Gideon describes. Simmons as feral. I do really appreciate, like, this is completely unlike, you know, like, Ward, uh, Grant, later in this episode, does say, you know, well, you know, I'd like to think I helped you along by throwing you out of plane, which, uh, throw, yeah, throwing you under the, the sea, and yeah, that definitely was a, a turning point for her. You know, she used to be 
a more gentle character, you know. So, yeah, I've, I quite appreciate when a, a piece of fiction is able to take someone's innocence away in a very credible way like this. And... Yeah, I, I, the, they actually stage a bank robbery, you know, to get to to Thomas Ward. And and I really appreciate, you know, his like immediately he's like, how did you find me? You know, he thinks this is Grant. He doesn't realize that they're enemies of Grant, but he knows it's connected to Grant. It's not like this can't just be random bank robbers. No they found me you know that's that's what he's been carrying for all these years since grant turned 17 he's been terrified thomas has been terrified of him of of him coming for him you know he was terrified of him before that as well but he wasn't able to to really avoid him they lived in the same place and Would you like to see a trick? And he uses his telekinesis powers to make some of the torture devices float. Just, yeah, really messed up. And, yeah, they, they talk about, they talk with Thomas about the well, which is a very deep subject, and tracing Grant's phone is very clever, you know, and, and you can see, like, I mentioned, you know, last, yeah, when I talked about last, the episode before this one, I love when, like, power, dyna power dynamics, like, shift, and when you have, like, Grant feels like there's nothing they can do to me. Stab me, shoot me, you know, I'll be fine, but when he sees live feed of Thomas, you know, that's when things change, you know, and... Yeah, when once Thomas is on the phone, he because he feels too much, he doesn't stop and think this is not you know, I they're gonna trace my phone, you know. Cause it's still let's see, what was the thing? I guess this is still the phone that actually yeah, no, never mind. Um, let's see. And then we have the... Yeah, Fitz has agreed he will go through the portal to protect Simmons. Very cool when Lincoln and Joey join the, the team. So Daisy is getting her wish. She's starting to form a team of Inhumans. And... Yeah, Gideon manages to talk Grant into going through the portal as well and then Coulson jumps out a plane through the portal but he ends up knocked out so yeah I'm I'm really excited to see what happens next and yeah I it was very very clever this thing of like we did actually think oh you know there's no more portal but yeah you know if you like this thing of oh we we took like chunks out of the monolith you know, a while back, and, and yeah, you know, they don't, you, it's, the, the portal, you know, evidently can be created by just a little bit of, of surface, you know, just enough, like, it has to be large enough that a person can pass through for that person to actually, all the way, go through, but it doesn't have to be the, the big block, the, the big full monolith, which we know is, is gone. Let's see. See. Right, and so some MDB trivia um, for this episode. When Rosalind discovers that Phil is unacquainted with online dating methods, she calls him a Luddite. The Luddites were early 19th century English laborers who opposed the Industrial Revolution and the advent of factory technology that eliminated their jobs. I really appreciate how, uh, appreciate how even-handed that is. Like, a lot of people hear Luddite and think, ah, those idiots just not refusing to use technology. But no, it was like they... They were losing jobs, and they had issue with that, and capitalist propaganda tried to, to tar and feather them. Let's see, and, and sadly for a lot of people, it has worked. But yeah, you know, today I've, I've seen other YouTubers make that point that, yeah, they just 
they don't want to lose their jobs. You know, it wasn't some kind of, you know, they're they're not like the the people currently screaming about 5G, you know, microchips in in vaccine injections. You know, it's no, they actually had, they they understood what was happening and they took issue with it, and yeah, capitalism does not care about the individual worker only the work getting done and frankly they'd rather not have to deal with workers and right I, I will say it's super cliche but I I did enjoy the it's it's yeah when you know yeah, Col Colson says, I spent every second since you murdered Rosalind trying to understand just how your sick mind works. And Grant's very tropey response, shouldn't be that hard. We're not that different, you and me. It's not like we operate in different worlds, Colson. We both got blood on our hands.